And hi, I'm Harry Pollock, and I'm presenting my game that made for Bethesda 105 called Dread. So it's a simple, short Metroidvania horror game. You have to find the missing crew of the SS Dread and find any survivors. So right now he just the character just picked up a gun, which he, he can use to beat these enemies here. So soon he'll also find a jetpack icon, which we'll find right now. He can use that to fly. I mean, what else is he going to do with the jetpack? So, next up, I'll show how death works. So, just if you touch one of those respawners and then touch an enemy, you will die. It will respawn back where the last respawner was that you touched. Quite happy with the death animation. So next up, I'll be showing another weapon that you can't pick up, which is the blue taser. It lets you defeat all the blue enemies. Just like, unlike that green blaster that I showed earlier, you can't defeat green enemies. So you'll have to switch between weapons depending on which enemy you're facing. So after you do a bit more exploration, you should find the next red cannon weapon, which is here. You can also use these weapons to destroy the same colored blocks. So now you can defeat all the red enemies. There's also a demonstration of using your switching around weapons to deal with the appropriate situations. And now you can escape this place. After you do a bit more exploration, you'll finally find the SS Dread and the lone survivor, which you'll pick up and you'll have to return to your ship. So it'll be a little bit of a trek back. It's a short game, so it's not going to take that long. I'll skip to it anyways. So, once you get back to your ship with your survivor in hand, you'll win the game. You'll be greeted by the most underwhelming victim screen of all time. Okay, so now I'll present the programming of the game itself starting with the code for the player character. So all of his variables are initialized here. Uh, his movement is dealt with in this part here. Or just depending on which arrow key you're pressing, it'll change his move speed. Or if you're not pressing anything, it'll change it to zero. And then it's put into action here. So here we have a timer for after you're dead, where just during this time you can't do anything because the dead variable is equal to true, and uh, while it's equal to true, this timer will go down, and once it's ended, it will uh, activate this function here, which will respawn you and revive you, making everything go back to normal. Uh, here, this is what lets you switch weapons, so if you're pressing on 1, you'll get the green weapon, but only if your blaster is equal to true. And if you press on 2, it'll set your weapon to blue if your taser variable is equal to true, etc, etc. Yeah, so this is how the jetpack will work. So if you're holding on to space, it just adds on to the jump force and puts it into action here. Right, his up vector is changed accordingly. And this is the code for just normal jump if you don't have the jetpack, and it only works if L grounded equals true, which means that the player character is on the ground, meaning that you can't double jump repeatedly in the air. So these are collisions, so these are what let you pick up items, like the jetpack, where if it's the tag is equal to jetpack, your L jetpack variable will be equal to true, and it'll destroy that object so it looks like you picked it up. The same thing for the blaster, the taser, and the cannon, and the survivor. This is the coding that lets you detect if you're on the ground or not. So this is uh, the coding that lets you die, basically. So if you touch an enemy tagged as an object tagged as an enemy, or an object tagged as a hazard, like the spikes, it'll set the L dead variable to true, and to set up other things within the animation state, and uh, your other your weapon to make it set. The, uh, the death animation will start, and triggering the timer too. Uh, so next up, I'll be showing how the weapon programmed. So once again, its variables are initialized here. Uh, the important one being its color, which will be set from this script. 
So just depending on which color it is, it'll have a different. We'll just change the animator will change its shape accordingly. This is the coding that actually lets you shoot. So just depending on which color, on what the color is for the T color variable, pressing the shoot button will shoot out a different prefab. So if you have a green, if it's equal to green, it'll shoot out the green bullet. If it's equal to blue, it'll shoot out the blue bullet, and you get the rest. Uh, what also happens is that it changes the target time variable to a different thing. So just there will be a different reloading time because you can only press and shoot if L timer is equal to false. So turn it back to false here in this timer's ending without function. So for the bullets, it's the same thing. Just like a lot of other things, it has a T color variable, which depends on which bullet it is. And uh, this is how it's moving. It's got a direction value. And so the way it destroys enemies and destructible blocks is once it comes to contact with them, it just det detects to see if it has the same color as the bullet. If it does, it'll destroy that game object and then itself. So same thing for destructible blocks. And if it hits just a regular wall, it'll just destroy itself. So using this void on destroy function, once it is destroyed itself, it will uh, create. It will instantiate this prefab, which is a, which will look like it to to make it look like it's exploded. Uh, so next, I'll be presenting how the enemies work. So notice the T color variable over here. Just depending on which T color variable they have, their animator will change them to the appropriate color. The sprites. So their move speed, their movement is di is a uh, depends on their direction variable, which is this. So this is what makes them move, and uh, it just the direction var variable will change if they collide into a wall or another enemy, so that they don't constantly move towards the same block or get stuck somewhere. So just like the bullets, they have an envoy destroy event which once which means that once they just get destroyed they'll instantiate an explosion game object uh, block script script for destructible blocks is pretty simple it's just that they have green well they have a color variable like the enemies simple stuff uh, so next up i'll be showing how the respawners work so basically it collides with the cop object it will change his uh, respawn coordinates to whatever is necessary. Uh, these are just the simple things, which just change the animation of it, which just change the physical appearance of an object depending on the situation. So this is for the survivor that you pick up at the end, and the screens which display just tutorials. Uh, this is another simple script which just well, it'll make the game object constantly follow the player. So it's used for things like this mission brief over here and this victory screen. Uh, finally, I'll just show how the blast script works, which is used for all the explosion game objects. So it just starts a timer with a public variable over here, and once that's down, it'll just destroy itself. Okay, so overall, I'm pretty happy with uh, what I ended up with. It was a little bit tedious to make because I had to place all these tiles individually. And what I had to do was make it so that one block has all the the is the, the collide one block blocks collider counts for all of the other blocks on the row because having all of the tiles have their own separate collider didn't work out that well. Um, if I had more time on this, I probably would have added more enemies and a nicer background. Well, I would have added a background because there's no background here. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with what I've got. And yeah.